I recently made a video on the new IK Multimedia Arc Studio Room Calibration System. And I received a bunch of questions and comments. It's crazy. And the question that kept coming back is how does it compare to Sonarworks Sound ID? And I'm going to be able to answer that for you because I've been working with Sound ID for several years, so I know it pretty well. And by the way, I have both affiliate links in the description down below. So this is not a sponsored video. All that to say that, of course, I'm going to be unbiased and give you the right picture on comparing both options so you can make a clear decision if you're debating on which one you should go for. Let's do it. Okay, if we look at the calibration process of each system, on the Sound ID side, it will measure 37 points, which is a lot, and it does not in a very efficient way. It's going to determine the distance between the two speakers in relation to the sweet spot, and it's going to be able to track your microphone while doing the measurements. This is awesome. This is like one side of sound ID that I like a lot. So on the Arc Studio side, there's a choice between a quick measurement and the regular advanced measurements. So seven points for the quick one and 21 measurement points uh, for the full measurement, which is the one I use. On the Arc side, the measurements is going to be done a bit differently. So for the 21 measurements, seven will be uh, six inches below the hearing point, seven at the hearing point and seven above the hearing point. And what's missing is the way to track the microphone while doing the measurements like we have on the Sound ID side. So I had to base myself on the picture of the software for the microphone placement. So to make the measurement process easier, I just put on some stickers on the floor to the position of my mic stand. So I keep the same location spots for my microphone on every measurement layer. And that seemed to work pretty well. So when it comes to the measurement results between the two, uh, the two systems, on the ARC side, uh, this is what my uh, calibration looks like. So there's the before calibration, which is the green uh, graphic. So there's a bump at around the 150 hertz, a bit of a dip in the uh, sub frequencies and a, a boost on the top end. If we look on the uh, Sound ID side, it's pretty much the same. It's very, very close. So even if they have like different ways of calibrating the room, the end result is very, very close. So either way, it's going to give you very good calibration. And when it comes to the sound itself, by comparing both, in my book, they both sound great. They're in the same ballpark. And of course, they will sound a bit different, but the differences are subjective at this point. It might please to one and not the other and vice versa. On my end, I kind of lean towards the arc uh, sound. You know, I find that it sounds a bit more natural for my taste. But again, someone else can say the same thing, you know, on the Sound ID side. Now, if we look at the plugin itself, I'm just going to briefly show you a few differences. Uh, they are both easy to work with. On the graphic side, we have the choice between the before reading and also the after or one or the other. On the Sound ID side, uh, it's the graphic side can show us the uh, after, before, what the calibration does, uh, phase, limits, you know. Uh, so a bit more options on this side. Uh, also, uh, there's a dry wet knob that I like a lot on the Sound ID side. If we look at the after calibration, this is the response you'll get at 100% uh, wet, which is basically a straight line. So very, very flat. At some point that can sound unnatural. So that's why when I use Sound ID, I kind of like to tweak the dry wet knob a bit, you know, just to make it sound a bit more natural. Okay. But on the arc side, I'm going to go on edit and I'm going to get connection types. And so I have three of those. There's the sharp, which is going to be, uh, let me just bring out the before, which is going to be close to a straight line. There is also the default, 
which is a bit more loose, sounds a bit more natural, and this is the one I use. And there's also the broad, which is gonna be even looser. I do prefer the dry wet mix knob, so I have way more flexibility on the intensity of the correction, opposed to having the choice between three correction types. But again, default works fine. So that would be something cool to add on the arc side. Another thing that I actually like on Sound ID is the custom target. Uh, which is a way to EQ the final result just to fine tune uh, things up. So I can create different bands of frequencies. Actually, I can create up to 15 if I'm not mistaken. And I can move them around, you know, and tweak the filter type from bell, low shelf, the high shelf, and also uh, play with the Q factor for a more narrow cut or boost which can be practical. On the ARC-4 side, I have uh, six band of frequencies that I can play around with, but it's not very flexible. So, you know, what you see is what you get. You increase, you decrease uh, the band, and that's it. That's all you do. Okay, so it's a bit more trickier if you want to fine tune some things up since you don't have access to Q factor, for example. So it adds a bit of limitation as far as the EQ goes. But both will have a high pass and low pass filter just to uh, tighten up the range, the affected corrected range uh, of frequencies. And same on the sound ID side. Okay, so if I don't want to affect the low end and the top end, I can do so with the high pass and low pass filters. Both will have different virtual systems uh, that you can monitor through. Like on the ARC side, there's a bunch of different emulation of uh, studio monitors. Also multimedia devices like a 49 inch TV, a portable Bluetooth speaker, and a smartphone. Uh, on the sound ID side, we click on tra translation check. And same here, we have different uh, types of devices and environments like uh, three different cars <laughs> that you can monitor through, um, different types of headphones, laptops, smartphones, studio speakers, which is limited to only two, uh, the NS11, which is the equivalent of the NS10 and the Mixcube uh, for the types of studio speakers. In that regard, there's more choice uh, on the uh, ARC-4 side. Both can create several profiles, okay, so you're not limited only to one. So if you use several sets of speakers, you can create custom profiles for each of them. And you can load them uh, straight from the measurement uh, side of the ARC-4. Uh, and you select your profile, and on the sound ID, it's on the left, listed on the left. Okay, now, one major difference between the two, and you know that already, is that the ARC Studio system includes a piece of hardware, that little box, and this is what sold me to the ARC system, meaning that you can activate the calibration straight inside the box. So you load it from the software to the box, and then you don't need the software anymore, uh, to apply calibration on your computer or on your DAW. So that is a big advantage of the ARC Studio. On the Sound ID side, there's no hardware. However, you can have the option on calibrating some headphones, okay? And lots of people will use Sound ID to calibrate headphones, to make headphones sound flat. So if I go on the Sound ID side, I have access to like almost all the headphone, the studio headphone manufacturers, like all the brands, all the models are listed. So I can go straight, for example, on their Odyssey, look for my MM500, and there you go. I have a profile, general profile I can work with. I don't use it because I like the way my headphones sound as they are. So I don't use headphone calibration for those, uh, but this is something that lots of people like to work with. And there's no headphone option on the ARC side. Now, by reading some of the comments on my ARC Studio video, some people had some concerns about the fact that there's some converters into this box. So there's a second layer of conversion. When getting out of your sound interface, to the ARC Studio box. And from that point, the signal is gonna go through the converters uh, to apply the calibration profile, and then we'll go back out in analog to feed your speakers. But on my side, I'm gonna have to say that it sounds very clean and transparent. I did lots of A-B testing by comparing the box sound 
with only using the plugin. With the system I have, I wasn't able to point out any differences, but that's me. But for someone who works with high-end gear and expensive studio monitors, that can be concerning and it's understandable. But as far as I'm concerned, it's all good. Now on the sound ID side, if you want to change profile, you select a new profile and you're good to go. On the Arc system, you select your profile, but before you can turn off the plugin, you need to store the profile on your device. So you need to make sure that the device is connected to your computer, load the profile, and then you're good to go. Okay, so if you use several uh, studio monitors and you want to switch from one to another, uh, there's maybe an extra step to go through, you know, just by loading the new profile on the device before shutting down the software. On the other hand, there's no latency <laughs> while working with the Arc Studio. So you can actually record with it, which is not necessarily the case with Sound ID. So I actually did some tests by using direct monitoring straight from my sound interface, going to the Arc Studio, of course, through my speakers and applying the correction. I didn't hear any latency. So if there's some, it's very, very tiny. So on my side, I can record uh, with the correction on straight from the Arc Studio box. Now, if you look at the price, very similar. Uh, if I go on the uh, Sweetwater website, Sound ID goes out at $99 for headphone calibration only. Uh, for headphone and the speakers, uh, it goes out at $249 US dollars. If you want to add the calibration microphone in the package, it's $299. US dollars. There's also something a bit more advanced with uh, Sound ID is the multi-channel uh, version that will work well with Atmos. So this goes at 499 US dollars. On the Arc Studio side, uh, the full system, which includes the hardware, the calibration mic, and of course the Arc 4 software goes out at 299 US dollars. But you can also uh, just buy the software itself and that will go out at 199 us dollars which will not include the box and the calibration mic also so that is only the software which is also the plugin now who's the winner between the arc studio system and sound id honestly it depends on your needs on my side i love to have access to a hardware to bypass the calibration uh, when I go from my headphones to my speakers because I don't use calibration on my headphones anyways. So this is a very good option. If on your side you do use headphone calibration on top of your studio monitors, Sound ID is the way to go. Either way, you're going to get very good results. Again, links are down below. Now, according to your needs, let me know down below which one you like the most. Now you can watch this video if you want to know more about the Arc Studio system. Leave your comments and questions down below. Until next time, take care and see you.